Thanks for checking out the Gadget Inspector channel. I really appreciate it. If you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel and make sure to click the notification bell so you'll know exactly when I upload new videos. Well, let's get into it, shall we? About a month ago, the FAA completed a rollout of LANCE. Now that acronym stands for Low Altitude Authorization and Notification Capability. Authorization is for 107 operators and notification is for hobbyists. I'm going to explain that as well as what this does and does not apply to. And I'm also going to show you how to use the system. Now, what this essentially does for part 107 operators is it provides a process for requesting authorization to fly in controlled airspace in real time. So for example, if you're in class C airspace, meaning there's a major airport within five miles of where you wanna fly, you can get darn near real time authorization to do so. Now, prior to Lance, these authorizations could take weeks or even months. For hobbyists, this system provides a streamlined process for notifying ATC or air traffic control of your intentions to fly within a proximity of five miles. The system is comparing your flight plan against airspace data in the FAA UAS data exchange. So it's looking to see if there are any NOTAMs or temporary flight restrictions that would preclude you from flying in that airspace. If all is clear, you'll get a near real time approval. So this system not only benefits us as pilots, but it also benefits manned aircraft pilots and ATC by providing them visibility into small unmanned aircraft, AKA drone operations. Now links are in the description box so you can look into this all on your own and corroborate what I'm saying. But the purpose of this video is to give you a summary about the system and show you how to use it. So make sure you check those links do a little research for yourself because if you're like me, you don't just believe everything some guy on YouTube says about important subject matter. Now, what Lance does not apply to is part 107 waivers, which is completely different. It's a completely different thing. Waivers are not approved through Lance. There's a separate process for that. When I say waiver, I mean daytime waivers that allow you to fly at night. And again, this applies to commercial pilots. There's a different set of rules for hobbyists, at least there used to be, and more on that later. Another example is waivers for flying over people or above 400 AGL, et cetera, et cetera. Now, according to transportation.gov, there are 1 million registered drones in the US, 878,000 of those are hobbyists, and 122,000 are commercial pilots. And again, I'm leaving links to where I got my information in the description box. Now those numbers are probably low because you know good and darn well every drone owner has not registered with the FAA. You have registered with the FAA, haven't you? <laughs> to give you a little more context, there are only about 325,000 registered manned aircraft in the US and it took over 100 years to reach that number. So the number of drones in the sky is triple that and that number will only continue to grow. So you have to admit there needs to be some kind of oversight and hopefully it's not overreaching oversight. What say you about all of that? One more quick thing before I show you how to use Lance. The president signed the FAA Reauthorization Act of 2018 on October 5th. Now I don't want this video to be super long so I won't get into the details about it but I mention it because there will likely be more changes coming for drone pilots and the industry overall most notably for hobbyists since section 336 was repealed. It's still very early, so we'll just have to wait and see what the FAA does. Okay, let me show you how easy it is to use Lance. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is download the AirMap app, and it should be available not only in iOS, but also in the Google Play Store, uh, so for Apple and Android products. Okay, so download that. Now you can access Lance through different, um, there's some other uh, apps I'm not as familiar with, but I've been using AirMap for a long time. It's excellent. There's also a desktop version of this, but um, as far as I have seen, Lance is not integrated into that yet, uh, or may never be. So you'll have to download the uh, app for your tablet, iPad, or your phone. Okay, so here we are in, uh, this is AirMap. And AirMap is really great because it's going to give you 
uh, parameters and stipulations and rules for flights as a part 107 operator or as a hobbyist. And you can get access to those various rules by coming down here and it's gonna ask you what's your mission? How are you gonna fly? Now, if you click on where it says uh, part 107 certified and click on that, it's gonna give you all the rules that you need to be concerned with, okay? Regarding a flight that you're creating, a flight plan for uh, part 107 uh, operations. Same thing is true if you're just flying for fun as a hobbyist and you'll get a set of rules there. The other thing to note is that when you change between a hobbyist and part 107, there's a different set of rules. So as you can see, you see all of the uh, gold circles there. Those are airports, heliports, uh, different things that you have to be advised of as a hobbyist. Now see what happens when we switch over to part 107. Okay, all of that goes away. See that? Now you see these red lines here with the zero underneath? That's basically giving you the allowable altitude you can fly at. So this is zero AGL. And obviously at the airport, you better not be flying a drone, much less anything else, okay? But you see, as you move away from the airport, see this 100 and this 200? Okay, that's 100 AGL, 200 AGL, okay? Now I have a spot here that I've always wanted to fly. It's a uh, really unique building. It's 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 a pyramid essentially, but it's pretty close to the airport. See that? Let me zoom out a little. There's the airport, and you can see it's not very far. But I can fly up to 200 AGL. I just need to get authorization to do so. Okay. So there's a couple ways you can create your flight plan. And again, this goes for hobbyists and Part 107. You can either just tap on the area or press and hold on the area, okay? Or you can come down next to where you see this gold triangle and press on that icon there, and that'll bring up um, your create flight plan options. Now, see here on the right, you've got three icons here. So these are different ways to draw your flight path, okay? You can just do like a radius, which is probably the easiest, but if you wanna be more precise, you can click on one of the other ones. I like to use this one right here because I can just draw out the flight plan that I plan on doing. Um, so as you can see, and it doesn't have to be exact, right? Okay, you, you don't, you're don't you not gonna be able to follow that path exactly, but within this general area, I'm applying for authorization to fly. Okay, let's click next. Okay. Now it's asking you what altitude you're gonna fly. I'm gonna go up to 150 because I believe there uh, we could fly up to 200 AGL. Uh, we can set it up for now, but I'm gonna set it up for Wednesday because I actually might try to go and fly this. I'm gonna set it for 1030. Okay, on Wednesday. And it's gonna ask how long you're gonna fly for. We'll say for an hour. You have to provide your name. Now you, sh you, you will have to create an account here and register, it's all free, but set up an account and everything. You're gonna be asked to add your aircraft um, because they're gonna wanna know what drone you're flying and they're gonna wanna know if that drone is registered. So you can see I have my Mavic 2 Pro here. I'm flying as a part 107 pilot, okay, or operator, and this drone is registered. For part 107 operators, we have to register each and every drone that we're gonna use for commercial purposes. Hobbyists also have to register, but as a hobbyist, you're essentially registering yourself. And then every drone that you have will be essentially registered. So that's a little difference between the two, uh, but in either case, you need to be registered with the FAA. So we're gonna select my Mavic 2 Pro, which is registered for part 107 purposes. It's asking about drone insurance. We don't need that. It's gonna, you know, your phone number and first and last name. They want that info there. It's gonna ask you what your max speed is gonna be, the weight of the drone, what your expected visibility at takeoff. Um, and th this is information you can get 
just from your weather report. Your weather report will tell you what uh, visibility is like. Uh, and it's gonna ask about anti-collision lighting. Uh, will you keep the drone in visual line of sight? Is the drone registered? We just talked about that. Did you do a pre-flight check? Uh, make sure everything is uh, connected properly or will you? And are you a part 107 certificate holder if you're applying for a part 107 operation? Okay, let's click next. Okay, it's giving you weather information. As you can see here, visibility is up to 10 statute miles there. Okay, uh, definitely won't be flying that far. So it's kind of a moot point. Okay, and you can see here it's saying uh, you will get authorization upon submission. Now there's some additional rules and things like that that you can click on and read through as well. But here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put the clock up or put the timer up and we're gonna click submit flight and we're gonna see how long it takes to get a response. So clicking submit flight now. Okay, flight plan has been submitted. Let's see how long it takes. I actually got the notification on my Apple Watch. So it didn't come up on the phone, but let me go out to my messages and show you that we did get the approval message. And there it is. So automated FAA control airspace authorization, accept it for flight with confirmation number. And then it gives you your confirmation number and you see that came through at 1149. So literally within 10 seconds or so, we got the confirmation. So this is awesome. Within 10 to 15 seconds, let, let's just say within 30 seconds of submitting your request, Lance is going to compare it to all the information in its database to determine whether it's safe for you to fly. If you completed the application properly with all the correct responses, you're nine times out of 10 going to get an authorization in real time. Well, that's it. If you have anything to add to the discussion, please leave a comment down below. If you have any questions, leave those as well, and I'll definitely respond and at least try to point you in the right direction. Until we meet again, be good to somebody and be good to yourself. I'll see you in the next one.